You're listening to the More Than The Music Podcast, episode 32, featuring Danny Goki. Rise comes from a very personal place. And, you know, when I was young, I went through some things that really hurt. You know, I don't share with many people, but it, man, it did something in inside of me that brought a lot of pain. And I just, I used to ask God, deliver me from this, deliver me from this. And it took some time, but over the years, God did deliver me. But not only did he deliver me, but I became stronger through it. And I saw him so much more clearly. I became better through it. Suffering creates a beautiful side of us that doesn't come through comfort, through losing a wife, through going through what I went through as a kid to where I'm at now. Understand this, your suffering has a purpose. And if you just trust, I'm telling you, you're gonna look back and say, God, thank you. I look back at my life and say, God, thank you. You're about to hear why Danny was so nervous about making a new album. If like his last record, were there any songs on this album that his wife didn't like? The shocking thing that he heard his son say during prayer time that he most likely picked up from him, and how a reunion on American Idol led to a powerful new song on Rise. I'm Justin Paul, along with Danny Goki, and we're going to talk about a lot more than just the music. More Than The Music is hosted by Justin Paul, a touring musician turned national radio personality who loves the dramatic, humorous, sometimes tragic, and often inspiring story behind the songs from your favorite artists. You can connect with the show at wayfm.com slash Justin. Now here's your host, Justin Paul. I'm so thrilled to be joined on the More Than The Music podcast by Mr. Danny Goki. How you doing, Danny? Justin, I'm doing great. How are you, man? Man, so so glad to have you back. You were here on episode three, and now here we are at episode 32, and we're back to talk about the new album, Rise. You've been cooking, man. I've been talking to everybody. (laughs) I'm glad to have you back on the show. Brand new songs. Yes. So glad you got some new music out now. Me too. (laughs) Last time we talked, you were looking at like a fall release. So why are you making oh, yeah. us wait even longer to get this new music, well, man? Well, there was this little thing called the election that <laughs> got in the way. <laughs> and to be honest, it would have trumped my sales. Oh. Huh? See what I did there? <laughs> no, but really, and it was hard to finish a record in time. And so when we kind of added everything up, I'm so glad they moved it. Because I'm going to tell you this, man, we just ran out of time. Yeah, yeah. So it was really, I was so happy to hear from a manager that we're moving the, the record release. And here we are. And I think this is... A good thing. The title track is Rise. It's already been played on Way FM. We're going to talk about that song as well. But let's start right at the beginning of the album. The first song, I've heard you singing it since you've been here in the studio. You really do love this song, Stronger Than We Think. Yeah, so Stronger Than We Think is an anthemic song. And I love it. You know, it opens up, does it feel much darker than it did before? You know, does it seem like we're up against so much more? But it's really a call to the warriors and the saints of God, basically saying the darkness has to run and hide because we are the light. And I really wanted to start off with a statement like that because as the darker it gets, the lighter and the brighter we become. But we did two versions of that song on my album. But I, I love how catchy it is. We had we got this really massive, like, you know, for lack of better terms, club remix, because you know that, <laughs> but you know, but get what I'm saying, it's that real heavy hitting. And then we have another version of it opening up the record. So when people get the record, listen to the first and last song it's the two variations of the song i have a feeling a lot of people are going to be at the gym exercising to that song and honestly i hope this song does make it to clubs i hope the light of god gets to places in the dark places because that's what we're called the great commission is our calling and when i went to make this record i knew i wanted to reach a church but not only that i knew i wanted to reach people who would never step foot in the church Yeah, we've talked uh, even off the show about how that's kind of your mission, reaching the dark, going into the dark places with the light. I mean, yeah. and, and you were talking to me about how you were getting back into TV a little bit. I saw you're hosting yeah. a show. Is that right? Yeah, I started hosting a show. But I just did that a few weeks ago. I recorded, what, 12 episodes in one day. And so we're cooking. But I can't shake it, man, since I was on American Idol. Because here's the thing, before American Idol, I was this praise and worship leader, loved the church, still love the church. But I didn't know anything about really the world, because I was raised in a very Christian environment and sheltered Christian school. But when I went on American Idol, I stepped foot on that stage, which I never thought I'd do it because I thought I'd be the next worship artist. And that is inside of me. You know, this is worship. Even when I'm showing, when I was singing secular songs, that was worship. Because what we do with the Spirit of God inside of us, it's worship to mm. our God. Anyways, I noticed how the music and my story connected with people. And this shifted something inside of me that I can't shake. And ever since then, I've just been saying, God, you know, he says in, was it Psalm 2 or I can't, he says, ask for the nations and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance, 
That's what I'm asking. I'm saying, God, how do we become a light? How do I decrease so that you increase? And so that's how we crafted the record. If you want to hear how Danny Goki got started in this whole thing, go back and listen to episode three. The story is incredible. He went from driving a semi truck yeah. to being uh, you remember, to, yeah, to being on American Idol to losing. I mean, it's an amazing story. And here we are with another episode talking about a different album. And it's just great to see the progression of what God is doing in your life, even in the past year. Man, this is where I become so grateful. You know, it's interesting. Hope in front of me, the record did so well. I'm sure we shared a lot about that in episode three. But when I went to make this record, I'm going to tell you, I was nervous because I was like, God, how do I follow this up? I don't have any songs. I got to finish this. The record label wants it by this date. I have nothing. And literally what arrested my thought was, God, you got me here. And if you got me here, you'll get me there. He who began a good work is able to complete it. And, you know, I said, God, here's my hands to write. Here's my voice to sing. I put it in your hands like the two fish and five loaves. And I'm asking that you multiply it, that you put your touch on it. And I feel like that's what happened. And I'm believing that his anointing. It's funny. I was signing CDs today, I started thinking about, you know, first of all, the thoughts come to me, is my CD good enough? Mm. Is it good enough to reach people? But then I thought about the story in Acts where Paul prayed over a rag and that rag went out and touched and brought healing to people. Yeah. I said, God, if you can use a rag, you can definitely use this album. And I give it to you. Anoint this album. So as I'm signing it, I just ask his anointing on it. You know, Holy Spirit, change, bring life through this. And so I just love that in God's hands, he can make nothing into something massive and big. And so I'm excited about it because with our God, anything's possible. But you talk about just things being good enough and the, and the record. I think a lot of people deal with that. I know I'm a perfectionist. I deal with that yeah. a lot too. You know, what's funny is you say that, but I was listening to episode three in our first conversation uh-huh. as I'm getting ready for this and I'm going, <laughs> Justin, that was a dumb question. Why did you ask that? You know, it's like, it's always in my head that it's not good enough, but huh, God can right. take lo- our mess yeah. and make something beautiful out of Dude, it. Dude, I love that you said, and that's how I was looking at this album, even my first album, all the, the work we do, but that said, man, it's not about me. And when I enter making this record I asked him to help me and I asked him and I believe he honors those prayers I said God what do you want to say and so I'm anticipating great things you know because God when he's in something it can't fail and I believe yeah. he's in it a lot has happened since the last time we talked I yes. mean you not only were touring with the Hope in Front of Me record but you made a Spanish version of <laughs> yeah. that record too oh, man. Yep. then you bought a bed, at, bed and breakfast yes. like dude what are you not doing I, doing like I'm everything sleeping. I'm yeah. not sleeping if we could talk about that you know, but I'm grateful. You know, it's funny. You come off American Idol, this huge show, and there's all this expectation. I have all this expectation. And I remember two years after the show, I, I lost my record deal. Yeah. And I'm doing nothing. I thank God for the opportunities. Now this year, you know, I'm dreaming, and I encourage people to dream God-sized dreams. My slogan this year is, I don't want Danny-sized dreams. I want God-sized dreams. You know, really, I want to accomplish what he put out there. You know, it's funny how we depend on ourselves. And we think great ideas, but we don't need our own ideas. You know, our ideas are overrated. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God, I need your thoughts so I can have great things, you know, and accomplish what you have for me. And so it's time to empty ourselves and say, God, what are you seeing for this year? And that's kind of how I take my approach. I do things that are risky. I do things because (laughs) I don't want average results. And I really encourage people, why settle for average when you can have supernatural? Don't go for natural, go for supernatural. Yeah, I look on Instagram, I look on Facebook, and you're doing so much more than just music, man. Like, you and your wife, I mean, you <laughs> buy, why'd you buy a bed and breakfast? Is that like a passion of yours? Well, uh, it's a few myriad of things. Like, you know, I do real estate on the side. It's always been something that is just, and here's why. It's funny, when I was driving a semi-truck, you know, reference podcast three, because <laughs> I, I talk about it, God began to build dreams inside of me for greater things. You know, it's funny because at that time I was renting an apartment for $525, barely making it, working two jobs, praise and worship leader, driving a semi truck. But it was in that semi truck that I learned and began to birth something that I wanted to build the kingdom of God. I can sing, but I want to do more than sing. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to raise finances and create streams of income that can bless the kingdom. And it was all based on, you know, you look at Las Vegas, you see Las Vegas has, you know, this massive empire that started with this ideas with finances to create more finance. They build these places that destroy people's lives. What it was on my heart is said, God, I want to build your kingdom. I want to build places that restore, heal, and bring hope into people's lives. And so it's funny, that's where the real estate got in there. It's just one of those things that we want to just expand the kingdom of God. And, you know, money in the church is something that people don't want to talk about because it's that, uh uh-oh, you know, they're asking something for me. But listen, if he gave his all, we should give our all. And he has, what I'm learning simply said, he has so much more. I didn't know that I could help 
orphans the way that we've been able to and help yeah. homeless the way we've been helped. But it's been through using ideas of real estate. God gave, when he gave the 10 talents to one, five talents and one talent to another, he expected some results. And God has given people listening now talents. What do you have that you're just kind of just settled with and became average with? God wants to take it and make it above average so that he can do more. The guy who buried the one talent, this was God. He said, you know, I was shrewd. You know what I require much from you. Why did you bury it? And he gave more to those who had more. That'll preach. preach. It. Hey, hey. Good God Almighty. <laughs> yeah. So have you know church up on this podcast yeah, right here. Church. We need a drummer <laughs> and an organist right now. Man, but all that, like the, your entire story, this entire year, all this stuff, like it's led to this theme, this rise theme. There's so much story behind it that led up to the writing of this yeah. song. I'd love for you to share that. Rise comes from a very personal place. And you know, when I was young, I went through some things that really hurt. You know, I don't share with many people, but it, man, it did something in inside of me that brought a lot of pain. And I just, I used to ask God, deliver me from this, deliver me from this. And it took some time, but over the years, God did deliver me. But not only did he deliver me, but I became stronger through it. And I saw him so much more clearly. I became better through it. Well, then fast forward to meeting my first wife. She was born with a heart condition. You know, we began to believe God for a healing. She was in and out the hospital. Well, four years into our marriage, after all the visits to the hospital, all these surgeries that went wrong, she passed away. That one really hurt because God, what happened to those prayers that I prayed? Where were you? Well, God brought me through that one. He had to kind of drag me kicking and screaming, mm. but nonetheless, he's a good father. And he brought me through. And when I was able to open my heart and see it from his perspective, I saw it so much clearly. I received healing. Well, fast forward three years ago, I fell into this depression this was a bad one. It was started as an oppression. I felt like this attack in the spiritual realm over my life, but it threw me and thrusted me into a depression that literally made me feel like I was falling down a pit and I couldn't grab anything. On It's almost like you're trying to grasp this dark pit, but you're just falling. Man, I'll be honest. This time I got upset because right away pain sends a message. I begin to feel pain and I feel like this is where it kind of stemmed from. There were some unresolved hurts in my life. And it began to open the door. I mean, literally, I lost 15 to 20 pounds. I couldn't control my mind. I would shake. I wouldn't eat to the point where I couldn't even sleep at night. My wife would have to hold me in bed and she had to speak scriptures to me and begin to just confess God's love over me because I had a hard time believing it. But when she would speak it, it did begin to help and calm me down. Make a very long story short. This is the part I want people to understand is I begin to seek God. And I'm so glad he began to speak. Because God usually will, he doesn't just speak to where you're at. He speaks to who he created you to be and who you are. And this is what he began to tell me out of Isaiah 60, 60 verse 1. It was rise, shine, for your light has come. It said arise out of your spiritual depression. And God acknowledged, he even goes on to say deep darkness will cover the earth. The darkness is here and it's strong. Mm -hmm. But he said the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking, God, hey, heal me. And then I'll rise because I'm kind of tired of this whole faith thing. I believe for something that I'm not feeling. I had to put that aside though, because Justin, had I hung on to that, it would have took me to a much darker place. Well, anyways, during this time, this is the best part. I was making an album called Hope in Front of Me. I didn't know at that time that Hope in Front of Me, more than you think I am, tell your heart to beat again, would change the landscapes of hearts around the, honestly, globally, not just in the States, but globally, people would hear this song. And this is what I understood from that. The enemy knows the power that we have, the spirit on the inside of us. And if he can lie to us, if he can get through the cracks of unhealed hurts and unhealed pain and disappointments, he can get in there and he can, it's almost like he controls us because he hits that hot button. Mm. So this is what I'm saying. Had I made a wrong decision, because I'm going to tell you, because at that time I'm thinking, God, it's like every time the enemy wants to come attack me, it's like you open the door and I become a punching bag. Where are you? Why don't you block it? I, I would block it if my son was getting an onslaught. But God sees things from an eternal perspective and a bigger perspective. You know, I don't like saying this, but suffering creates a beautiful side of us that doesn't come through comfort and through just our own plans and purposes. And it's each through losing a wife, through going through what I went through as a kid to where I'm at now and allowing God to heal me, which I really want to encourage people, allow God to heal you. You might have hid those things in the past, those disappointments. God hasn't forgotten about it. But listen, walking around fractured, we won't heal anybody. But when we are healed, we have that message to heal others. And that's the whole point of what I'm saying. What people have went through and what they're listening to now. God still wants to use. He wants to use that that abuse situation. You know, Joyce Meyer said something that really shook me to the core. You know, her father molested her for years, sexually abused her until she was 18 years old. Over 200 times, she mm. said her father did that. And she used to cry out and ask God to help her and said that her father would still come in the room at night. 
Well, she says now, and I love how she said that. She said, I'm actually a better person. And I'm, more, I'm thankful now for what I went through because I'm a better person now and have helped more people now than had I never gone through that. I'm trying to encourage you that God will use it and make you better had you not gone through it. And your testimony and your life will heal so many others. Don't stop now. You're closer than you think. Rise, shine. That refining, those storms that we go through, the process, No, nobody likes that part. No. That's the part where we go, God, really? Like, what are you doing in our life? Yeah. But if only we could see what God sees, the bigger picture like you were talking about, yeah. if only we could see down the line at what God is doing and how God is going to use our story, I think it would change our attitude about suffering. Well, and think about it. And the, the best example I can give you guys, if we need scripture, show me scripture. <laughs> Look at Paul. He wrote, I'm in chains. But the, he literally says in one of the scriptures, he says, but this has come for the furtherance of the gospel. God definitely had him in his hands and allowed him to be stoned, allowed him to be put in chains because two thirds of the Bible that has brought hope to billions. Listen to me. Billions of people came through his suffering. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, in our minds, we think we want this picture-perfect life. We think we need this, that, and the other thing. But God's saying, no, you don't see it how I see it. Embrace it. Because even in Peter, he says, after you suffered for a little while, he will establish you. Understand this. Your suffering has a purpose. And if you just trust, I'm telling you, you're going to look back and say, God, thank you. I look back at my life and say, God, thank you. So And I don't know if you were saying thank you on Christmas, though, as you're in bed <sighs> sick as a dog on Christmas Day, man. Oh like, what was gosh. that like? Could you even celebrate with your family? Well, I toured heavily, you know, at Christmas time. You know, I had a Christmas album that did really well. And it was great. Me and Natalie Grant did a tour together. and But it was funny. I got home December 24th, and my family came in. And, you know, we put them at the bed and breakfast. We had a dinner there. And I remember that night, I went and had dinner, and it's almost like, the snowball effect because literally <laughs> as I'm there when I got there to when I left about two hours later I couldn't talk I almost felt like I was gonna pass out and I was in bed at Christmas time I remember getting up out of bed just to watch my kids open presents but man it hurt to get out of bed <laughs> I was out for the count and um, I think I'm gonna listen to my body just a little bit more <laughs> you than good I now did. though like you Bro, good you I ready am. to go back out and do this thing I am I'm glad I had some time off though I needed it the next song on the album that kind of speaks into this is this song, Slow Down. Uh, last time we were here, you were actually talking about how things were just going so fast and how you were crazy busy. And I'd like to think our conversation inspired you to write this song. I don't know if it did or not, but here we are on this Justin, album. Justin, it was you. <laughs> I give all credit. <laughs> no. A song about slowing down. <laughs> yeah, and let me tell you, this one, and I'm still learning this, and this is a process, but I mean, it really went harder after we talked. But I will say this. This is why I keep saying I got to empty myself of my thoughts. I need God thoughts because we can be like a hamster on a wheel with our thoughts. Well, I need to do this because if I do this, then I have this outcome and I'll get this. You know, especially being in the music industry, the record label, you feel that pressure. I got to sell a lot of records or they're going to drop me, you know, because I've been dropped by a record label because I didn't sell enough records. But what I've learned to do is that my time with Jesus and being at the feet of Jesus will be the most important thing that I can do because God can do in one moment when I'm in prayer what it would take me 10 lifetimes to do Mm -hmm. of just striving. And I'm learning to embrace that. And that's why God says, trust in me with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Our understanding is going to tell us to go do this, 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 and we'll get really human results. But God says, if you stand at my feet, and that's what the song says, my time with him is more important than me having a more hustle, go harder, yeah, get it done. That's one of the lines of the song. I really encourage people, this is the year, if you want God results, do it God's way. If you want to burn yourself out, do it your way. Some people might think that your job as a musician is just to walk on stage and perform and then you just go home. But no, like peeling back the veil a little bit, musicians are some of the hardest working people in in the country just because of like everything that goes with it. I mean, we're talking here now, you've done this a lot just to promote this record too. And that takes your time, time away from your family. It does. And I'll tell you this, because when we're, you're pouring out music, you're actually pouring from like a spiritual level. And even what you do in radio, there's a, when there's a spiritual element involved, unless you go back to the feet of Jesus and get refilled, it'll drain you Mm -hmm. you know you feel it when we're driving through you know on the bus and we're going to sleep at night and we're driving through different altitudes and different temperatures a lot of stress gets put on the body believe it or not 
but we do work hard, but there's such a reward for what we do. I count it an honor. You know, Paul is the best example. Jesus is the best example. These two knew how to balance a lot and be very effective, yet keep the main thing the main thing. And I think that's the balance and the fight that I want to fight for this year. So I got it. I saw two on the bus too. Like you're your wife's hairdresser and everything. Like I mean, how many yes, jobs do you have that. on the road, man? You were man, fixing I'm her a hair up. Multifaceted man, <laughs> full service husband. You know, post music career, yeah. Danny Goki. Do your hair up right, man. <laughs> well, you know, she, here's funny because Leah Set, my wife, she just tends to forget about the back of her hair because she doesn't see it. I'm like, babe, you have a bird's nest you back fix there. That. Let me fix that for you. <laughs> now, I did notice too in one of your other Instagram videos something that my wife and I often debate about. Like when she leans in for a kiss and she's got that bright red lipstick on. Yeah. I'm like, honey, but that lipstick. And I saw a video, your wife had this bright red <laughs> lipstick on, and she's like, the only reason I wore it is because you hate it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you saw that. The thing is, girls do makeup for other girls. And when she does that, <laughs> I know that's for a girl's reaction, not for a man's yeah. reaction, you know, or for me, because I, I'm not into the bright red lipsticks. Although I will say that day, it was a, one of the better reds that I've seen on her. <laughs> Out of for some reason, that bright or that she'll do these darker colors on these lips, but they just. They don't do it. I'm like, me. babe, you give me a kiss, but I don't want to wear that red lipstick all day long. Oh, I don't. Listen, my lips. Wait, are... You're so right, man. They they don't do it for us. My wife admitted it. She's like, well, you know what? Honestly, this ain't for you. She said, I, <laughs> we're going to this event. People like it. They give me compliments to girls that are there, and she's like, Danny, you just don't understand. I was like, well, I guess I don't get it. <laughs> and yes, when you when she kisses me with that, oh uh, man, I need a napkin to wipe yeah. all of it off. <laughs> you need like a a damp towel. <laughs> well, recently my lips were really chapped, and we were in. I think Michigan at the time or some northern state on the Christmas tour. She didn't have any chapstick, so she gets she's like, use this. Man, it was like a colored <laughs> I had violet shade number three on and it's she's taking video of it and I'm like, why am I putting this on but my lips for that chap? <laughs> I also saw another uh, thing on Facebook. Your son was praying over your meal, mm-hmm. and he thanked God for being so handsome. That yeah. must be something you tell him a lot, right? I t- yes, and so that's so funny because my son, I love watching him pray right now because at night, so what we do, when I pray for my son, I declare things over him because I'll tell you this, it's important that we be a voice in our kid's life because there's other voices, and like when I was younger, there was a voice in my head telling me I was ugly, and you'll listen to that. You know, then other kids reaffirm that you're ugly, you're this, you're that, and my sister's you just begin to believe because you don't know anything else. So I decided that I'm going to be a voice and I'm going to tell him that he's a handsome man, that he's a leader, that he loves God, that he is dedicated to God. And I say these things every night when I pray for him. Well, now when my son went to go pray, he's like, dear Jesus, you're handsome. Thank you for French fries. Like he, he, And it was the best. Like, oh, you think God's handsome. That's pretty sweet. And it's, it's so funny because they're like, dear God, you're so nice. <laughs> I find it to be the cutest thing in the world. I think more of us should pray like that. Like adults should pray like that, right? We should, man. God is a tell handsome. Tell God how good he is. Yeah, and tell, and tell him he's handsome because he made me and I'm <laughs> handsome and you're handsome. And you you know, embrace who God has made you to be. And But it is, my son thanks God for the food. He thanks it for mommy, daddy, abuelo, abuela, grandma, grandpa. You know, he's thanking God for all these. It's the purest thing to see my son pray. And a lot of words he does not pronounce. And it's funny to watch. He's like, dear God, you're so nice. You get for French fries. Hamburguesa. Sandwich. And it's, it's hilarious. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> if you haven't seen this video, I think it's on your Facebook page, Danny yeah, Goki yeah. Official. You got to go check oh, that out. Man. man, one of my favorite songs on the album, such a beautiful song, is this song, Chasing, that's got Jordan Sparks on it. Yeah. So we were recently at the Idol Finale, and I just connected with her. You know, a lot of idols were there from past seasons, you know, as the last episode. And just getting to talk to her, it was beautiful to hear her heart. And, you know, I wanted to do a feature with her. And I wrote this song. And, you know, the song is called Chasing. And it's one of those messages where it really simply says, you know, I've been chasing dreams. I've been chasing things. But all this time, Lord, you've been chasing me. And I love it because 
a lot of times we chase the wrong things, but God's love is unconditional. It's unfailing. And the thing about God is he's faithful. He doesn't change. Even though we change in our desires, we want this wrong thing and that wrong thing, and we think we need this. He's so consistent. Mm. And so when I wrote this song, you know, I wanted her on it. When she said yes, and I got on a phone call with her, it was me, you know, my producer, we were all talking about the song. She's like, when I heard it, I cried. She just said, because it's just, she's accomplished great things, has done so many awesome things. She goes, but when I look back, I just see things that maybe now I see weren't worth chasing. And, you know, she was born and raised in church and she makes that very clear. But, you know, ultimately she connected with the song. And so she did a beautiful vocal on it. You know, we're both power singers, but when you hear the song, it is a laid back ballad. Mm -hmm. The point of this song was to eavesdrop on a conversation between someone and God. That was the whole thing, and it just it was crafted so beautiful. I'm so happy with the song. I believe it will be a single coming up here on radio. I've been chasing dreams Like wind chasing the falling leaves I've been chasing dreams But all I felt like just after the first couple of lines, the word that struck me was just honest. It's just like you're praying to God and you're yeah. just being honest about, God, I haven't spent enough time with you. Yep. You know, and I think a lot of us are there. You know, we know we should. We know how. We know that we should get in God's word and yeah. pray more often. We just, a lot of times we don't because if you're like me, you kind of put other things ahead of it many times. Yeah. And I'm really challenging myself this year. And that's a funny thing. It's, it's going to come through a renewed mind. The reason why we do and fall back into patterns is because we don't. Honestly, we don't fully believe the word of God. And so we tend to go with our impulses this year. You know, I was asked recently about my new year's resolutions and really I don't have resolutions because res it takes action, not a declaration or just, I'm going to do this. It sounds good. And it feels great to say, I'm going to do this this next year, but we're having to do it. It's a different thing. So this year, my goal is to renew my mind, to allow the word of God change me because I don't want to miss it. I mean, you look at the Bible and you hear Jesus say, but Lord, I did this in your name and I did this. He says, I don't know you depart from me. Mm. We can do a lot of great things, but if he's not in it, then it's not worth doing. I think that's a song on your it's album. It's a song on yeah. <laughs> And that's why we wrote that song because it's called If You Ain't In It because, you know, I could have it all and miss it. Paul said, what did he say? He said, I can give my life to be burned. I can give all my money to the poor. I can do all this. But if I have not love, I missed it. We're just chasing the wrong things. Really, when it comes down to it, and I'm not trying to throw puns out here with my songs <laughs> and them. We're chasing the wrong things and we're getting wrong results and we're turning, you know, you know, a lot of people look at money as the final end and money's great. It's a tool and it can be used for great things, but it can also be used for wrong things and destroy you. There's a lot of rich people that are miserable right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like he told Abraham, he said, I am your exceedingly and abundant reward. And this is before Abraham fulfilled the promise. This is when Abraham had stepped out. God was saying, I'm your reward. I'm the final destination. You'll do great things, but it's going to be a with me. I don't want to have it all, write my story anywhere I want, everything will just fall apart if you wait in it. I don't want to get my way, no I don't want to run this thing, cause I know it all is the same if you wait in it. If you wait in it. Another great song on this album too, it's got Kiara Sheard on it, Better Than I Found It. And I think this song speaks so much into what we're going through now in our world. It seems like every day, I mean, even just recently with the shootings happening in Fort Lauderdale, Ooh, every just saw that. single day there is something in our world happening. What are we doing to leave this a better place? Matt, let me tell you this, and I'm going to make this very clear. Before you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic... Before you're male or female, if you have given your life to Christ, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation. And this is my whole point. It seems like we're becoming more and more divided. Mm -hmm. And you even look in the church, and the church is divided. And we went through this tumultuous election where it's uh, the country became divided. Families, you couldn't talk to anyone about who you're going for without a fight breaking out. And simply what I'm saying is this. We are 
called to a much higher standard. And we are called to love. Now, I'm not negating what you are, if you're male, female, if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic. God created that for a purpose. He's not colorblind. And now that's a popular thing to say in the church. He's colored. He doesn't see color. No, he absolutely sees color. That's why he created it. But we see it wrongly. When we see it with his perspective, we see a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. So with that song, I know I can't solve it, the issue, but I knew I wanted to talk about it. Let's start a movement. Let's spark because we can leave this world better than we found it. And it literally starts with us. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. This song is a challenge. It says, I just want to be a light. We will be a part of the solution, but we got to get out of the picking of sides. And I'm not saying everyone's doing that, but you know, it's easy. I mean, I know I hear things in my heart, like, it's like, how can they say that? But I'm like, that's not my fight. My Mm -hmm. fight is to love people. To love the hate out of people. I think when you start with love, you're able to have those discussions. See, I think immediately yeah. when we, we look at differences, we talk about our differences, we jump right to what sets us apart and not what brings <laughs> us together. That's good, Justin. And instead, yeah. if we started with love, hmm. I think we could have civilized debates about different things without it blowing up. That's strong. I love that. I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. What brings us together is more than what divides us. I love that you said that because really, what do we all do? Because we're so bent on our perspective. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times you might you might be right, but the Bible says tell the truth in love. You could have all the truth in the world, but if you don't tell in love, you're just yep. bashing people on the head. And no one's going to hear it. Nobody's going to hear it. That's why Jesus, man, he, his presentation of the truth was just so perfect. He didn't deny that people were in sin, but he saw a better version of them and mm-hmm. said, now go and sin no more. And he wasn't saying don't do that ever again. I mean, although that probably was a part of it, but what he was saying is there's a higher level for you now. Go embrace that higher that higher life that I've given you. Yeah, and man, talk about powerhouse vocals. Kiki shared on this song, man. Blows it away, yeah, right? Let me tell you now, maybe many people who are listening don't know who she is. Go check her out. She comes from a royal heritage of gospel singers. I, you know, I listened to a lot of black gospel growing up, and let me tell you this. She is one of the... Go listen to her version of Indescribable. My goodness. She's one of the best voices in gospel music. Her mom is uh, Karen Clark Sheard and part of the Karen Clark Sheard family. And to get her on the album, it, I love it. She's black, I'm white. And I love. I wanted to bring that together. Listen, I've been raised around so much color. My wife is Hispanic. My first wife was Hispanic. My children are mixed children. My high school was a majority black school. Had a lot of Hispanic influence of my life. I actually have more Hispanic influence on my life than anything else, which is interesting. But I see the beauty in it. There's such beauty. But when we don't understand it, we become afraid of it and we mm-hmm. fear it. The enemy uses fear to, I'm telling you, musically, I've been so inspired by listening to so much gospel music. My dad listened to Motown. What I'm saying is we're looking at things the wrong way. It's time to open up our eyes and see them how they were supposed to be, not as how the enemy deceived us to make us look at it. I just want to be light, be Now, we've kind of worked our way through the record, and last time we talked, there was one song on the album that Leia said did not like, hmm. and that was a song you wrote for her, right? Yep, better than gold. Did all the songs on this album make the cut? Was Leia set like thumbs up on all of them this time? As a matter of fact, yeah. There's not, I can't think of one song she doesn't like. I'm going through my brain right now. She really likes this record. That's boom! A, boom! <laughs> Look at that. Like, give this thing a Grammy already. Leia said it's awesome. Come on now. See, Justin, go ahead. (laughs) Say it. Maybe. I wonder if there's one song. I do have a song on there. It's another love song, kind of like Better Than Gold. It's called Symptoms. She didn't say she didn't like it, but I don't think she gets it. See, it's funny because, you know, Better Than Gold has like the 70s, like, yep, you yep. know, funky thing to it. And so does Symptoms. Which I think, is so fun. Like, how could uh, you not like it? Agreed. I, you're like me, man. We were raised to appreciate that music. She's this Latina from Miami listening to Spanish salsa, you know, music. So she don't get that era of music like you and I would. And most people would who have a good ear for music. Oop, sorry, honey. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what you get when you marry a musician. Like, you just get to, like, approve or disapprove of all the songs, you know? Well, you know what's so funny? It's, we've just finally figured out that her opinions really aren't that great when it comes to music. <laughs> She's like, don't listen to me. You know I'm, I'm the worst at picking music. When I listen to her advice on music, it comes with a filter. Let me put it that way. <laughs> You're very bold right now. I hope everything's going to be all right here. when you get she home. She is not here. And she, <laughs> hopefully she won't tune into this podcast. Oh, goodness, because I will be on the couch. Dude, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for sharing the stories behind the album Rise, and I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Yeah, Justin, congratulations from Podcast 3. Now this is 32? 32. So 30, man, this is, 
I feel like I just did that podcast with you recently. Wasn't too long ago. Congrats. That's well, all I got to say. Congrats. Well, thank you for being here. I'm so glad you, you were so open and real and sharing the stories behind these songs. Thank you to the listeners. Thank you guys for your support. Couldn't do this without you. And Justin, thank you for your time. You've been listening to the More Than The Music podcast, episode 32, featuring Danny Goki. If you've enjoyed this episode or any others, would you kindly give the show a five-star rating and review inside iTunes? Your five-star rating and review would be greatly appreciated. I'm Justin Paul. To connect with the show and to even have a chance to win an autographed CD of Danny Goki's Rise that was featured in this episode, just go to wayfm.com Justin.